to start or stop a motor, we generally use push button. If you want to control this motor with digital timer, then how we will do the connection of digital timer with this motor can be understood easily with the help of this video. Let's start the video. To start or stop the power supply to this motor, we need control wiring. And for this, we are going to use two pole MCB. We will call this two pole MCB as control MCB. Suppose you want to start or stop a motor at a particular time. We need a timer. You can use any type of timer. If you want to program this timer for different intervals, then we need a digital timer. The timer which is displayed on screen now is manufactured by CNC company. You can also see the model number here. The specifications of this timer is also displayed here. If we talk about how much programming in total we can do is maximum 16 programming. This means total 16 times can be a motor get started or stopped in a day. You will find a manual button here with which you can start or stop the load. The first step we are gonna do is we will connect two wires at the output terminal of this MCB, which means we connected two wires for phase supply and neutral supply. The power supply we get with these two wires will be supplied to the coil terminals of digital timer. There is terminal one and two, and I'm connecting these two wires here. You can understand in this circuit diagram, the phase supply is supplied to timer and similarly neutral supply is also connected with timer. This means we directly supplied the power to operate this timer. After that, from this phase supply, a power supply NC contact of overload relay is supplied. So what we will do is at this phase terminal, we will connect a wire and the other end of wire is to be connected with 95 number. Terminal. You can see this is a 95 number terminal at which phase supply is connected. Now, if you see the circuit diagram, then you will observe that the output power supply of overload relay is supplied to stop push button. So, if I am taking a push button, then the NC contact for stop, this red push button is for NC contact. You can see it, it is written here. We will connect this point with overload relay. I already connected four wires with these two push button to save time. The wire connected with element of this stop push button. I am going to take one of the two wires and connect it with NC contact of overload relay. So what we did just now is we connected power supply from overload relay to stop push button. The power supply from output terminal of push button is received in this wire. Let's understand where to connect this wire. You can see in this circuit diagram, from stop push button to selector switch, power must be supplied. So we have to introduce a selector switch. You can see a lot of terminals in this switch and to understand this in simple way, first set this at zero. This means that on selecting zero, you will get continuity at any two terminals. Terminal number one and terminal number three are common, which means incoming supply must be given at these terminals. Now, if you set the switch at one, I will receive power supply at terminal number two. Now, if I set the switch at two, then I will receive power supply at terminal number four. These other two contacts will have the same work, like five and seven are common terminals, and similarly nine and eleven are common terminals. You will receive the output in six and eight number terminals. We need only one contact, so we use terminal. 1 and 3 as common. 2 number terminal is for 1 position and 4 number terminal is for 2nd position. Like I told you that output power supply from this wire is to be connected at common terminal of selector switch. For now, I connect this wire at 3 number terminal because it is common terminal. If you see the circuit diagram for wiring, then you will observe that from the local position or one position of selector switch, power is supplied to start push button and from there the power is supplied to the coil of contactor. As you can see this start push button, I already connected two wires. You have to take one of the two wires and at one position of selector switch, connect this wire with two number terminal. 
the second wire of this push button will be used to supply power to contactor. So I connect this wire at A1 terminal of contactor. Let's again see the circuit diagram. You will find one more thing is that the NO contact of this contactor is connected in parallel with start push button. The NO contact which is connected here is also called holding circuit. Even if we release this by pressing start push button and at that time for contactor to remain on, holding circuit is required. To make the holding circuit, what we have to do is from the one position of selector switch, a wire is connected to input power supply of NO contact. After that, from the output terminal of NO contact, power is to be supplied at A1 terminal of contactor. I am taking a piece of wire. I am connecting one end of wire tink to the terminal at one number position. The input power supply from this wire is supplied to NO contact of the contactor. We will connect one more wire from the output terminal of NO contact. And the other end of wire is to be connected at A1 terminal of contactor. Now we have to provide neutral power supply to this contactor. And for that, I will loop a wire with this timer from the same terminal of neutral supply of timer. After all these connections, if I switch on the MCB and press this start push button, then you can see that contactor is on now. On pressing stop push button, contactor is turned off. You can see contactor on, contactor off. So with the help of these push buttons, we can regulate the contactor. What we need to do now is with the help of this timer also, we will switch on this contactor. For the connection with timer, we need to do two things. First is to supply the power to this timer. Initially, I already did this. The output terminal of this timer, that is terminals 3, 4, 5. Among these three, we have to select NO contact terminal. Four number is common, five is of NO and three is of NC. First, we need to supply power to four number terminal and this will be done through selector switch. This means on setting the selector switch at two number position, after that only the power is supplied to this timer that is at common terminal. I am now connecting one end of wire with this common terminal and the other end of wire is to be connected at four number terminal of selector switch. Hence the power is supplied to this timer. I am now connecting one more wire with the NO contact terminal and the other end of the wire is to be connected with A1 terminal of the contactor. Okay, now the connection is completed. I also connected this fan with this contactor. Now if I talk about this timer, exactly at what time this fan will start or stop will be done through programming. For the programming of this timer, you can refer to the manual and you can easily understand the programming for this timer. So I am now switching on this MCB and after that I am setting the position of this selector switch at off position. In this position, if I press this start push button, this contactor won't be turned on because the output power is not generated through selector switch. Now, if I set this switch at one position, then our push buttons will work now. If I press this start push button, you can see the motor is on now. If I press stop push button, the motor will be turned off. So now you clearly understood that with the help of these push buttons, how you turn on and off the motor. Now, if you want this motor to be operated through this timer, then you need to set the position of selector switch at position number two. This means on the setting of switch at this position only, this motor will work with this timer. If you select the switch at zero position or one position, this motor won't work with the timer. So I selected two number position and on the basis of programmed time this timer will work and accordingly the motor will start or stop. Let's set the time now. So if I go to program options and set the hour, let it be 18 only and further for minute programming. I'm setting the minutes as 53 now. So I set 
18 hour 53 minutes time for the motor to turn on. Now if I again press this button then programming to turn off the motor is displayed. We just observed that at 53 minutes the fan is switched on and we didn't done the programming to turn off this motor so let's do it. I'm setting the R at 18. 18 hour 53 second is already displaying so I am changing the minute to 54. So on reaching 54 minute this fan will automatically switch off. So you can see our motor is on now. You can also see an indication on the timer glowing which shows the output power supply from this timer is generating. The moment at which the 54 minute started the fan will turn off. So you saw that as soon as the program time starts the fan is turned off. This means the fan is operated through this timer. Ok friends, I hope you liked this video. If you like this video, please do like, share and comment on this video. And if you didn't subscribe my channel, please subscribe my channel. Thank you.